So I'm going to use basic table to show the optimization. We can do a bracket too. I think I can pull up the other optimizations I've done and show you them also. So, right, building a table typically. I'm going to make it a round table. I'm going to make the top. I'll make the base first. And we'll just say 24 inches. Right. And so what you do is you build the build chamber of whatever you want to topology out. So topology is going to like remove material and just leave the material that's needed to carry the load. Make sense. All right. So to do this table, right, I got a 24 inch base. I'll do like a 60 inch top to it, but I need a plane up and away. So I need a reference plane. Yeah, I probably got to get on my sketch. And I'll use the top plane and we'll go up, I don't know, 36 is about table height. And then we'll put the top. So you need to do a loft, you need two sketches and I'm just lofting between one to the other. You could build this a number of ways. Huh? Yeah. Well, what you're doing is really at this point, you're just building the build envelope. Okay. So I'm going to do this and then I'm just going to close it up. It, you got to have a volume, you got to have a solid shape. Okay. So we're going to, boom, we're going to exit that sketch, get that sketch unhighlighted. That's the part I always forget to do, which means just click out here somewhere. So now neither sketch is like active, right? So you can go and loft and choose your two sketches and it'll go between them. So it's got a twist to it. See how they don't always line up the green dots. So I take the twist out. You can leave the twist in, it just adds complexity, right? All right, good. So there's my build chamber, got a top surface, got a bottom surface and I'm going to have the AI build the structure to hold whatever load I want. Okay. Um, oh, this thing's in the way. Let's move it. Mm, there, I can get it. Go down here. All right. So we go into simulation. We're going to do a new study. So this is just like, like if you were doing a static load study, that's this thing. Right. And that would be just to understand deformation and stresses and strains. But we're going to go straight to topology. Hit the green check. So there's a lot of steps here. That's why I'm recording it. You can go back through it slower. And then I put up another video of another guy going through a bracket, kind of the similar way. He got a little more complicated than I think you need to get. But what you have to do is work down through these. That's what's important. The first one is only if you have things that are connecting. We don't. This is just one object. So I can go straight to fixtures. I right click and I'm going to go and say, okay, I need some fixed geometry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you don't fix something, it's just going to remove things that you don't want removed kind of thing. But you cannot fix what you're going to load because you would be loading a fixed thing and it wouldn't do anything. Like it, it's fixed, right? So on this one, it makes sense to fix the bottom. So I'm gonna fix that just with fixed geometry, not hinge or not a roller thing, just means that that bottom is stuck, okay? So then once you get something fixed, like if you had bolt holes like the transducer, which we will do, um, not right away, but we will do it. You would want to fix the holes so they didn't move around, right? Or they didn't get removed. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, next is loads. So I'm going to load it by a pressure is what I'm going to use. But there's other loads you can do. And I'm going to do it in the PIS, PSI system. And I'll put just 10 PSI on it. Right. And this is asking me where. Where do you want to load it? That shows up, right? So we get a loading condition 
on the top of the table. Now, since I didn't fix this, it could potentially want to remove it. Like there's no reason it wouldn't remove that. So there's some gold, there's some manufacturing controls. I think that's, yeah, preserved region. That's where we want to do that. So we haven't done this goals and constraints. I'll do that in a second. But preserve the region means like, is there an area that you want not to be touched? And I want the top of the table not to be touched. Like I don't want a bunch of holes in the top of the table, right? So I'm gonna select that surface. And then you can open up this preserved area and say like how much. So I'm going to put it into inches and I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, three inches of it. Right? Yeah. So then there's this little geometry preview. You can click on that and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to preserve that top three inches. Right? In other words, I can't mess with it. Same with like if you had a hole, you would want to preserve around the hole a little bit. Right? Because you don't want it to like start removing parts of the hole. That's not good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So we have all that. The goals and constraints is like, what do you want to do here? Like there's a number of optimizations you can do. This best stiffness to weight ratio is the most common. That means reduce material. Like I had you reduce 50%, right? Yeah. So I'm going to reduce 80%. So we're gonna go from this to 80% of the structure, okay? And then again, there's, there's many other things you can like put into it. Like you can do factor of safety down here, like based on the stresses that are generated, stay within this factor of safety, but go as light as possible, right? So, I mean, there's, it's a little bit mind blowing, the number of choices you can make. So just keep it simple in the beginning, all right. So we have all that. We have manufacturing process. We have our goals. We have our load, our fixture. We don't need connections. Mesh, we should run a mesh. So we should create a mesh first before you optimize. So what it mesh does is it kind of turns it into an STL that the printer would understand, right? So it's can, it can optimize that faster than if you don't mesh it. If you don't create a mesh, it will create a mesh, but it'll just do whatever it wants. So I'm gonna say create mesh. You can set the density here, fine, coarse, whatever you want. Um, there's one that I like to do though, mesh parameters. Yeah, curvature based mesh. Since we have kind of some curves going on, right? I wanted to have some curvature. You can tweak this a little. I typically just leave it alone, whatever it comes up with. Like, yeah, go with that. But like, you can get smaller, you know, you can put 16 sides in. It's just going to, processor time is going to go way up yeah. the more you get dense. Like like yep. Like yep. Like yep. So as soon as it meshes out, you're ready to go. You just go to the topology study, right click and hit run. Oh, guess what we didn't do? Yeah, so you got to go to the part here and you got to edit the material. I want to make it wood, right? Wood table. The problem with wood is a lot of these don't have the properties in, like oak doesn't have it, maple doesn't have it. You could go into custom materials and put all that in and then use whatever wood you want. So I'm just going to use balsa because balsa is completely there. Yep. So I'll apply that, which I think it did. Now let's see if it'll. It's gonna run. Uh oh. Nope, it's gonna run. So this I think took like eight minutes last time. I did something like this. Uh oh. Oh, it probably doesn't like part one. I bet that's true. Uh, I was doing all the weight reduction stuff, and I saw how much scrap I love it. Yeah. 
So I'll try and run it again. I knew that at one time. I actually have the specs, I think. I don't know if I want to do that while it's processing. Yeah, I, I don't know, but. I don't think so. Mesh is still there. We did not fix the top. Top's loaded. We fixed the bottom. Oh, it's still referring to part one. I wonder if I wonder if that, I wonder if I screwed that up by not giving it a name right away. Study yeah, let's delete this. We're gonna delete this study. One more try. <clears throat> I'll go through it faster. I have my first one, so I can show it if we if we don't get it. Fix geometry. We're going to fix the bottom. Uh, external load. We're going to put a pressure on. We're going to do that up here in PSI and 10. That's all good. Uh, goals and constraint, best stiffness to ratio. We're going to go 80%. Trying to see if I miss anything through these. I think that, that should be good. Uh, manufacturing concern. We're going to preserve this at a preservation depth of what I say, three inches. Review that. That was good. And we're going to mesh it. We're going to create the mesh. And we're going to make it a curvature based mesh. Boom. It's interesting. It's meshing it just fine. Not yet. Ooh, that says wood table, but I don't think. Oh, yeah, we set that. Should be good. Let's just make sure. Balsa. Apply. I wonder if I need to apply it before the mesh because I'm doing it after the mesh. I don't know. We're going to see. Yes. Yeah, it's like it's not taking the material. Balsa, apply. Not taking it. I'm going to try it up here. Not normally. I know, but you can do it in the topology study, though. Yeah, so I don't, I don't see that like being it, but well, it's here now. Let's just see if it comes up with balsa. Yeah, interesting. I uh, never had to do that before. I don't think. Create a mesh. Curvature, check. Yeah, I think it looks the same.
1%. That's the weirdest thing. Simulation education edition, would table topology study failed, but it doesn't tell me why. Yeah, I don't think so, but we're going to look at it. Yeah, so in this, I didn't even, I didn't have the material specified, right? That's what we did the first time. So here's the topology study. Uh, we got the fixture, we got the load, same load. We've got preserved regions, all the same. Yeah, two inches, that right there, same thing. Uh, so I wonder if I just did, I don't know if I, we can look at that. So I did not, I don't think I did the curvature. I just did a straight up mesh. So that could be it. I guess, um, but yeah, here's the results. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's super cool. So I don't know why it won't run, uh, yeah. but I just did this like, I don't know, this morning. Why is it uh, symmetrical though? I, I thought the same thing. I'm like, why is that not symmetrical? Like. This is a symmetrical load throughout the entire top. The only thing I could think of is in the loft, if I didn't have it perfectly vertical, then maybe there is a twist to that base, which slightly just shifted the yeah, position like of it, right? Monster. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was rotated, if that loft was rotated, that was the only thing I could think of. Yeah. It looks pretty straight, but I just did it by eye. So I, yeah, that was the only thing I could come up with, but I thought the same thing, like, why is that not flipping symmetrical? I mean, I kind of like that it's not, but anyway, that's the 80% reduction. Uh, and I, did, uh, so you know how you said the depth for it not to mess with the stuff at the top? Yeah. Can you do the same thing for it at the bottom? Yeah, and I think I should have, because that's going to get weird down there. Yeah. So yeah, you can do the same thing at the bottom. Yep. Okay, so I think, uh, let's look at what I have you doing. I think I have you follow the other example that I put up and build the bracket. Um, work through, yeah, it's this tutorial. So this is a different tutorial. Um, and use your transducer bracket. So he's gonna go through a bracket, different than your bracket, but the same kind of concepts, then try to run. I think he does a 50% reduction. So try to run that optimization on your transducer bracket. Is that a seven? A uh, week. I think I'm just a week on everything. Let's look. Yeah, 510. Today's the third. Yep. That's it. Good times. I'm a little disappointed my optimization wouldn't run, but I wasn't going to make you sit here for eight minutes anyway, so...